Putrajaya has decided not to end price controls for chicken and maintain the electricity and water tariff in Peninsula Malaysia in a bid to stave off the spiralling cost of living. Prime Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said his administration will introduce a new ceiling price for chicken. With details to be announced by the Minister of Agriculture and Food Industries, Dato Sri Dr Ronald Kiandi. The price cap for standard chicken, set at 8 ringgit 90 cent per kilogram currently in Peninsula Malaysia, will be ending on June 30th. Without the price ceiling, the price is expected to increase to between 10 ringgit per kilogram and 12 ringgit 50 cent per kilogram. Meanwhile, the electricity tariff, which was due for revision on July 1st, and the water tariff will remain unchanged. At the moment, the government is imposing a 3.7 cent per kilowatt hour surcharge on non domestic users, while domestic users enjoy a rebate of 2 cent per kilowatt hour. According to the PM, with this decision, Putrajaya remains committed to bearing a subsidy amounting to 5.8 billion ringgit, despite the sharp increase in fuel and other generation costs. The Department of Statistics says Malaysia's inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index or CPI, grew 2.8% in May from a year earlier, led by the continued rise in the prices of food. That's compared to the 2.3% year-on-year increase in April 2022. Chief Statistician Dato Sri Dr Muhammad Uzir Mahidin said food inflation continued to rise to a new record of 5.2%, the highest since November 2011 with 93% of items in this group recording increases. Except for communications, other segments from transport to furnishings, household equipment and routine household maintenance also saw increases and led to the higher headline inflation of 2.8%. According to him, the prices of food at home rose 5.5% year-on-year in May, while the prices of food away from home rose 5.1%. Among food groups, the CPI's meat segment showed the highest increase of 9.5%, with the chicken component rising 13.4% compared with a 7.5% year-on-year rise in April. He said the average price of chicken in May 2022 was 9 ringgit 70 cent per kilogram, as compared to 8 ringgit 44 in May 2021. Meanwhile, a significant price increase for food away from home can be seen for rice with side dishes 8.3%, roti canai 7.8%, food made with noodles 5.7% and cooked chicken 5.1%. FGV Holdings shareholders have passed resolutions to up the director's fees for its chairman and non-executive directors by between 25% and 60% at its annual general meeting today. The biggest increase is for FGV's non-independent, non-executive chairman, Dato Zulkifli Abdul Wahab, whose director fee is increased by 120,000 ringgit or 60% to 480,000 ringgit or 40,000 ringgit per month from 300,000 ringgit previously. It is noted that Zulkifli has waived his fees as the chairman of the Board Sustainability Committee with 40,000 ringgit until the conglomerate's next AGM in 2023. He also waived his meeting allowances for that committee at 2,000 ringgit for each attendance. The director's fees for six other non-executive directors were raised to 150,000 ringgit from 120,000 ringgit not including board committee membership and allowances. FGV's director fees have been scrutinised in the past on the back of dismal financial performance in the years prior to the uptick in crude palm oil prices since 2020. FGV booked 1.08 billion ringgit in losses in FY18 and 242 million ringgit in FY19, but has been profitable since. In the first quarter of FY22, FGV posted a net profit of 369.24 million ringgit, its highest quarterly performance in eight years on the back of 5.85 billion ringgit in revenue. Shares of FGV rose 4% to close at 1 ringgit 56 for a market capitalization of 5.69 billion ringgit.
The Kuala Lumpur High Court allowed former 1MDB President and CEO Arukanda Kandasamy to be a prosecution witness in the ongoing 1MDB audit report tempering trial and appear as a witness against his co-accused Datuk Sri Najib Raza. Justice Muhammad Zaini Mazlan said he was satisfied that Arukanda, as the then CEO, has relevant information on the charge against the former Prime Minister and the fact that he had attended the 1MDB audit meetings in February 2016 is relevant to the charge against Najib. On the issue of indemnity, Justice Zaini said that it is up to the court to determine if Arukanda had indeed made a true and full discovery of all things to which he was examined. Following the ruling, Arul Kanda was called to the stand as a witness and the trial proceeded with his testimony. Testifying as the prosecution's 15th witness, he confirmed that if not for the February 24th meeting with former Auditor General Tan Sri Amrin Wang and National Audit Department officers, the original copy of the 1MDB audit report would have been tabled to the Public Accounts Committee. He said he was instructed by Najib to attend the meeting for several key reasons, which included concerns if the report could potentially be spun politically against the then-PM. Subsequently, several items were removed from the audit report. The owner of the developer involved in the 6.34 billion ringgit Penang undersea tunnel project testified today that he gave Lim Guan Eng 100,000 ringgit cash and a 43,000 ringgit luxury watch for the then Penang chief minister's birthday. Dato Zarul Ahmad Muhammad Zulkifli, the director of Consortium Zenith Construction, told the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court that he had given Lim an envelope filled with 100,000 ringgit cash as a birthday gift when the pair was at the then Penang Chief Minister's office in December 2014. He said Lim neither asked what the contents were nor refused it, adding that the latter looked happy after receiving the gift. Zarul noted that the sum was part of the bribe money or 10% profit cut in the Penang Undersea Tunnel project. For Lim's birthday in 2015, Zarul said he gave the DAP lawmaker a Morris Lacroix wristwatch worth 43,000 ringgit and another 100,000 ringgit cash filled envelope. He said Lim handed back the envelope, though the politician seemed happy to have received the timepiece. Zarul said he was unfazed when Lim rejected the 100,000 ringgit, as the project at that time was still far from complete. <laughs> 